In Hamilton, Superman flies over the town that has welcomed him and his family. This is their home, as it has been for some time now. But today, everything changes. That night, John and Clark spy some visitors in the barn. Batman and Robin have come to talk. Yet Lois doesn't care for meetings in the dark, and insists they talk indoors like normal people. The two explain that Batman has been looking into Superboy's genetics, and Bruce is worried. There is nothing wrong with John biologically. If anything, he's too healthy. According to Batman's scans, John's powers should have developed more fully by now yet they haven't. Bruce explains that he believes Superboy should be much stronger than he currently is, and is worried something in the environment is holding him back. Superman bristles at all of this. Clark has been nothing if not thorough in scanning everything around them to make sure that their home is safe, and he refuses to engage in what he sees as conspiracy theories. He can't believe the world is more black than white. In fact, he has to believe it, now more than ever. Batman asks about the food John has been eating, which has all been procured locally, including milk specially delivered by John Saran Caffey, from her family's award-winning dairy farm. Batman gets suspicious and decides to investigate, watched by Superman from a distance, until his friend's heartbeat disappears. Bruce makes his way into the farm, and gets a fresh sample from the cow. The milk suddenly transforms into a black goo which envelops Batman. A voice speaks out. It seems there's another troublemaker poking their nose around where it doesn't belong. But they aren't worried. They'll just put him with the others. Hello and welcome to Comic Island. My name is Zardin, and this is my review of Superman Black Dawn. So, let's talk about Superman for a minute. It's important to remember that this is a character who has kind of gotten famous for being a bit difficult to write for. He's hard to navigate, is so powerful it's tough to give him a reasonable state to fight against, and he can be very bland if handled poorly on the writing side of things. Superman is the sort of character that when done well, he can be the front and center of the greatest superhero stories ever told. Falling short of that, Superman comics tend to get mediocre very quickly, even if everyone working on the comic is doing a great job. This is important to keep in mind when we're talking about Superman in the era of Rebirth, because it underscores how incredible it is that for an entire year, both the Superman and Action Comics issues have been totally amazing. The reason for this is very simple, the addition of a family, as well as the use of creators who really seem to get Superman. Patrick Gleason, Peter Tomasi, Dan Jurgens, and a lot of other amazing artists and colorists, all working together to tell this really polished series of stories that, on the whole, I've found very impressive. They really know what it takes to tell a proper Superman story, and nowhere is that more evident than in Superman Black Dawn, with, without any exaggeration or distortion, might be one of the better Superman comics I've ever read. Now I do say better, not best. It's not even close to best, and would barely even crack my all-time best ofs. But it is up there. It is getting close. My reasoning for this is because of everything in the comic. First of all, the art is phenomenal. We start out with these big, iconic shots of stretching landscapes and a lofty depiction of the charm associated with a small, welcoming town like this one. It leaves a very classic impression of Superman and the optimism associated with this character. Then things move into a really dark and creepy territory very quickly. I've got to say, for a Superman comic, this does horror very well. There's a certain sense of dread throughout this story. The villain uses this black goo to like control people and trap them and have this weird influence on John for some time. And it's done very well, where the goo like overpowers its victims the way it does with Batman in this scene. And it gives a good sense of how creepy the experience of being surrounded by this stuff would be. The main villain is a great reveal if you know Superman history, and I won't give away the specifics here. And his presence is paid off nicely after being set up for some time in several past stories. I'll be honest, I did not expect who it ends up being, and that was a really good plot twist. 
More importantly, and I will give this part away because it's revealed early, the entire town of Hamilton is revealed to be behind the whole thing, and that's a critical part of the horror behind this comic. The idea of your neighbors, these people that welcomed the Kant family in and gave them shelter, having this ulterior motive, that's really creepy, and it's done well in this comic. The art conveys these themes perfectly throughout, with the lofty start, to the dark finish, to the really big ending. There's a lot of really great action scenes throughout this comic, all drawn extremely well. There's a wonderful finale to this comic that nicely pays off something from Superboy we've all been waiting for, and probably isn't a surprise, but is a great moment just the same. But it's one fight scene in the middle of this video that really stands out to me. See, there's a part of this comic where Lois is confronted by the townspeople in her home. And there's nothing I can do but share in the sheer awesomeness of this fight scene. <laughs> Why, hello, Miss Kent. Mayor Goodman, Candace, how'd you get here so quickly? I imagine you're looking for this. <laughs> Quite fast, isn't she? Come on, come on, come on! Why does the wife of Superman need a gun? This isn't a gun, Mr. Martinez. It's a souvenir! <laughs> She's a bit more well-armed than we originally thought. Ah! Upstairs, hurry! Yeah! Here. Get him. Ah! What the? Okay. I guess we're leaving. If I can drive Frankenstein's scooter, I should be- Voice unidentified. No ignition match found. How do you start this? Gauntlet glove ignition match. Driving privileges granted. Now we're talking. Several bogeys converging. Suggest initiating shield and weapon systems. Fire them up! <laughs> so I just want to pause for a moment and reflect on how awesome that scene is. That's one of the best action scenes I've seen out of all of 2017 so far. Just, just throwing that out there. This is what is so strong about the Superman comics. It's one thing to give Superman a family, but the Rebirth comics consistently give something for that family to do. Lois is right in the middle of this action, competent, capable, and totally kicking ass. It's not the first time something awesome like this has happened in the Superman comics either. And it's always just so great, so well done. Black Dawn makes it look like they're doing this stuff with Superman effortlessly, when writing a Superman comic is anything but that. Gleason and Tomasi really, truly nailed this story. So much so that, yeah, it really is one of the better Superman comics that I've ever read. With only a handful of stories ever rising above it in quality. Although, to be fair, those better ones are really, really good and kind of a step above this. Black Dawn signifies the end of the first year of Superman's rebirth stories, and an end of the Kent family's time in Hamilton. From here, as it's been a little while now, they're moving on to Metropolis, and I'm enjoying it so far. How could I not, though, after this year? I, <laughs> You just gotta give them the benefit of the doubt at this point. This was an amazing story arc to close off a particular era of Superman history that just really worked. The next step will follow up on this stuff, but... I enjoyed the time we had here with Hamilton. It was really well done overall, and I'm very impressed with everything they did with this period in Superman history. All that being said, there is one thing, and it's kind of a big thing that holds this story back. If you aren't at least a little caught up on the Superman comics since the start of Rebirth, the payoff and fun of Black Dawn won't register as much. Now it isn't that big a deal, but I imagine people less familiar with Superman, including some of the stuff from long before even the New 52, might not appreciate this comic as much as I did. You can't blame anyone for this, it's not a deal breaker and not a fault of the creators, and it's no one's fault for not having read everything they need to read to appreciate this, but it is holding the comic back. I wouldn't really recommend somebody start reading Superman at Black Dawn, but I would recommend they read every Superman Rebirth comic they can get their hands on before this one, and then read this, because it will most certainly be worth your time. Even if you don't do that and just start reading this comic exclusively from the issues covered, which is 20 to 25 by the way, if we only consider what is on the page here, it is still a good comic. It still does well at letting you know what you need to know, and you can still get the basics of this story. 
It's still a lot of fun straddling a few different genres effectively, and it still is full of some great cameos, including Frankenstein, who along with his bride, Batman, Robin, and the Kents, all team up for an epic finale that really sells the whole thing to me as one of the greatest Superman stories ever told. I also like how this particular story is six issues long. Most of the Superman comics and a lot of the Rebirth ones have been shorter in the terms of issue length. But this story is big, it had a lot of stuff to dwell on, and so having it be six issues long was good for helping flesh out some of these important plot lines. We wouldn't have gotten a good sense of the betrayal the family feels at the Hamilton town turning against them, or half of these awesome action scenes if they hadn't have made it as long as it needs to be. That's a good thing that Rebirth's been doing. Some of the stories that are shorter work well, but when they need to do something a little longer and more fleshed out, they do it, and in this case, they did it really well. So that's the end of the video. A special thanks to James and Alifluro for providing some extra voices for me for that scene. That was a lot of fun to do. Thanks to our patrons who voted for this as the topic. Again, fun video to talk about. I really enjoyed Black Dawn. If you want to have a say in some videos we make for only five dollars a month, you get to vote every week on a topic for all kinds of videos now. It used to just be reviews, now we're doing top tens, bigger stories like this, all sorts of stuff. So check it out if you're interested, and otherwise don't forget to like, subscribe, and keep reading comics.